loud? Karen, thank you. There we go. We're recording. So you great. And are we at the 845 mark? We are, and punctuality says it all, right? So welcome. Welcome to this year's virtual Coast Guard Academy Parents Weekend class of 2022 cocktail party or whatever it is that sort of floats your boat at the moment. And clearly the theme is we are stronger together, right? So so it's the, the year that we have to say resiliency, durability, tenacity in the face of adversity, and, and we've got this. So I've got a, just one announcement for our class, a class challenge, but before I do that, let's introduce some of the, uh, the fabulous people on the call, the leaders, if you will. Uh, Chris, I'll let you start, well, Kate, actually, I should be letting you start. Between Kate and Chris, this Parents Weekend wouldn't exist if it really weren't for some of your rallying. So, Kate, if you want to introduce yourself. I, can you hear me? Yeah. I was double muted. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, we're excited to start off this, this Parents Weekend week a little early. Um, there's a lot in store for you. Uh, take advantage of all of the videos that have been created. A lot of work went into it. Um, you know, much different conversation than we had an hour ago with the 2024 parents, because you guys have been around for a while. So I'm just going to say welcome and turn it over to Chris. Thanks, Kate. I will say only a brief hello and, and welcome. I'm watching the numbers rise in the participant list. That's exciting. Uh, 2022 parents, we look an awful lot more chill than some of the 2024 parents. Uh, we, we're getting there. <laughs> um, but with that, um, maybe um, uh, Admiral Kelly, Mrs. Kelly, are you ready to jump in and, and greet the, the group and say welcome? We are. Wonderful. We are Please. Definitely ready to jump in and thank you for the opportunity to be with you tonight. And thanks to uh, Kate and everyone in the uh, Parents Association leadership team for, uh, for coordinating what I think is gonna be a great week. You have a, you have a jam packed week and, and I know you're videotaping a ton of it. So uh, folks will be able to watch at their leisure. And, and, uh, and, and while I know a lot of folks have things on their, on their plate, I'm sure there's some things that we can talk about tonight and hopefully answer some questions for you. And, when folks tune in uh, at a later point in time, they'll be able to pick some of that information up. So my wife, Angie, and I are here with you. Uh, hopefully, as you know, we're parents also. Our son, Patrick, graduated in the class of 2014. Uh, so he's an even-numbered grad. I'm an odd-numbered grad. So, you know, I still, I still debate the, uh, the efficacy of even-numbered classes. But Angie's a big fan of the even-numbered classes. Ah. So, <laughs> so uh, we'll, go, we'll go with that. But uh, we definitely miss you. We wish you were here with us uh, this week. The good news is uh, you have one more Parents Weekend under your belt, and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll definitely do everything we can in our power to have you here in 2021 to join us. And, and uh, I know you know that uh, there's a lot of things that got to fall into place, but, but hopefully we'll, we'll all be there as a nation uh, and as a community writ large and uh, be in a much better place. But, you know, Angie and I have had the opportunity to watch your, uh, your daughters and sons for the past year and a half where we've had the privilege of living here in quarters one and being the superintendent. And Angie has some thoughts on, uh, on, on the great class of 2022, huh? So I, I would just like to say, uh, welcome to Parents Weekend. Um, and it has been really uh, just a pleasure watching them uh, grow. And uh, this summer, before when they just started out with the cadre, uh, before the swabs came in, uh, we had met and it was interesting to listen to them. They were talking about, you know, what they thought it was going to be like. And then they went through the swab summer. And by the end, they were like, wow, we really enjoyed that. And um, they, they actually still are watching uh, Taking Care of the Fourth Class. Uh, they did an incredible job with the challenges um, that they were faced this summer. Um, and I, I think they, they really worked very well together. So it's been great watching them become leaders. Um, and probably one of the fav my favorite moments um, with the core so far has been the uh, IC sports, which has occurred um, mostly on the weekends. And they just had a fabulous time. Um, they actually got to work together as companies and they got to uh, learn about one another. And they all said they really enjoyed that. So, uh, so that, that was a positive um, uh, Situation. Yeah, they, they, they enjoyed it so much. They've asked us, when are we going to do it again? Uh, so we've kind of, we've kind of ra ra raised the bar a little bit on that. And, uh, and it's something that, you know, again, we're learning a lot going through this process. And that's one of the things we will take away. You know, one of the, the class of 2022, I challenged them 
uh, back in June when they first arrived here to be cadre until the 18th of May, uh, not to just be cadre for the summer. That their job, their role, their 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 duty as a second class cadet is to be a cadre to the class of 2024 through 18 May. And I think you'd be very proud of them. One of the things that they did uh, that they chose to do as a class is they wear these uh, red uh, aguilettes during swap summer. Um, and it was about two weeks into the school year and I, I saw them in their trops and they're wearing the red aguilettes. And I said, I said to somebody, I said, what are they doing? And they said, well, sir, you told them their cadre through the 18th of May. And so they're going to wear their, their cadre gear through the 18th of May. And I think that just speaks volumes about the, the class and their commitment and their dedication to the class of 2024 and to their responsibilities as second class cadets. And the retention for the class of 2024 has been off the charts. We've never had a class retain at the level that the class of 24 has. We've only lost nine students. Two of them were to medical, um, and hopefully they'll have an opportunity to come back maybe in a future class. Uh, to only lose seven cadets during swap summer is amazing. Last year, we lost 16, and we thought that that was a record year. So uh, kudos to the class of 2022 and everything they did to instill the type of leadership that, that we truly need, not only here at the academy, but out in the Coast Guard. So uh, they, they've been they've been pretty impressive, and I've gotten to know them a little bit more. You know, the class, the third class cadets, uh, they kind of go under the radar a little bit. So when we got came on board last year, you don't see them as much, but now you see them stepping up, and I really look forward to getting to know them more in the spring semester, and then as they move into first class year, uh, as they prepare for their graduation and moving on to to being uh, being ensigns in the United States Coast Guard. Now, obviously, uh, a couple of big things will happen here pretty soon. They'll find out about their car loans. Uh, that'll give uh, that'll give you either a lot of angst when you find out that your sons and daughters are getting like a thirty-five, thirty-seven thousand dollar loan at you know 075 percent interest or something crazy like that. But uh, you know we, we they have a lot of good tools in place to support them, and I know you brought them up brought them up well. And uh, we don't see a lot of a lot of high priced cars driving around the uh, the campus. What I hear about is you know they've invested in their IRAs and done other things. So good on them. But hey, let me. Uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't talk a little bit about COVID and where we're at right now. We, uh, we just had another positive today. Uh, another student wasn't feeling well, presented themselves to medical. Uh, we tested them uh, within an hour. We knew that they were positive for COVID and we were able to do contact tracing. Right now we have seven cadets in isolation. That means seven cadets who've tested positive for COVID. We have 27 cadets who are in quarantine. That means they had some type of contact within uh, within six feet for greater than 10 minutes with one of those cadets. Now, I would say that the seven cadets who are in isolation all either presented to medical is not feeling well and were tested and immediately put into quarantine, I'm sorry, isolation, or they were students who were in quarantine who when their test came back, they tested as positive uh, and moved over to isolation. So, you know, we're, we're doing our best to get our arms around this. Uh, the city of New London, the county, the New London County is, uh, is, is really taken off seven consecutive weeks. Uh, it's gone up each and every week. Uh, when, went from about 55 three weeks ago to 124, to 155, to 250, the number of positive cases in the county. So it's a, it's a hotbed right now and we're doing everything we can. And, and I, you know, the cadets don't wanna be the one who get this and they clearly don't wanna be the ones who bring their roommates mm -hmm. or their classmates, their teammates down to medical. Uh, we did have five of the six uh, initial cases, and then we had the seven today. Five of the six were all on the football team. So today we did saliva testing on every member of the football team. We should have those results back by Wednesday. Uh, and then all of our student athletes who are hoping to compete this weekend will all do saliva testing on Wednesday within 72 hours in accordance with the NCAA guidelines. And we should have their results back by Friday afternoon. So uh, in, in the abundance of caution, as we were kind of testing through things and getting our Getting our arms around this, we decided to go virtual classes uh, today, tomorrow, and Wednesday. Uh, we also did grab and go meals, uh, so folks could uh, can, can kind of de-densify the wardroom and spread out a little bit. But we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, Master Chief and I walked through the barracks today, uh, and the good news is your your sons and daughters are doing the right things, checking in on their fourth class, checking in on their third class, checking in on each other. Uh, so I'm very proud of of, of what they're doing. Uh, we get 35 days to go. 35 days from today, uh, we'll be wrapping up the semester, sending our students home for, uh, for Thanksgiving. They'll be with you. They'll go virtual uh, for classes for 10 days after Thanksgiving and wrap up all classes on the 11th of December. 
We will bring, be looking to bring everybody back the first week in January, probably phased out like we did uh, over the summer. And then they'll go into a, a, a ROM, a restriction of movement for about two weeks while we test everybody again. So that's, uh, that's the plan as we get ready to, uh, to give them back to you. Uh, here in 35 days. We don't want to give them back, but, no. but uh, we know they, they, they want to get back to you. They, uh, they all thoroughly enjoyed their time uh, home. They, they spoke about, you know, just having an unexpected opportunity to spend more time with their moms and dads or brothers and sisters uh, was, one of the, was one of the positive takeaways from, uh, from, from this whole experience. So, you know, these kids are amazing. They're resilient. They continue to look at the positives, the, the bright side, and it's just an honor and a privilege to be around them, to serve them, uh, and to be able to be with you here tonight. So we did want to make ourselves available if there's any questions, uh, any any comments that you might have, uh, anything that we can help you out with uh, before you uh, continue with the rest of your happy hour here this evening. Any questions, you can use the chat or? Yeah, the chat seemed to work pretty good for the class of 24. So if you, if you just want to throw something up in chat or if you want to raise your hand or or just shout out. I'll shout out, quick question. Our cadet, quick question. He was gonna look into this this week. He just lost his grandmother. We're in his second grandmother since he went back. So you know, really hard for him. And he was asking whether he should come back. With everything going on in Connecticut and we're in Southern California, we were like, we didn't recommend it, but it would really throw a wrench in what he's doing there. And you know, he spent a lot of time with his grandma over when he was home and whatnot, you know, um, so I was just wondering what your view is of that with travel, with the COVID spikes for something like that. Yeah, Sharon, that's, that's a hard one, right? There's, there, there are no easy answers, um, you know, in this time and place. I, I would offer that, uh, that that's probably a personal decision between, you know, you and your son and your family. Uh, he, can, he can make the request. The, uh, I think California is on the red, is a red state right now for the state of Connecticut. Uh, I don't have the list right in front of me, but I know it's 39 states, so good likelihood. We've been very hesitant about allowing cadets for, for any reason traveling to red states. So, right. um, so I, I, would, I would say, you know, right off the bat, we're kind of looking at that as kind of the first decision point. Is it a green state or is it a red state? If it's a red state, we're, we're really hesitant about uh, allowing the cadets to travel to those states. Okay, that was our gut. But while we had you, we thought we'd ask. <laughs> uh, that's, uh, and I appreciate you doing that. That's serious. Uh, <laughs> us out there, and we we're, uh, we we we're keeping our thoughts and prayers uh, during this challenging time. Yeah, Thanks. thank you, thank you, appreciate it. You do have questions in the chat. One of them is about the morale of the Corps, and another is about uh, construction in Chase Hall. Yeah, can I hit construction first because that's easier. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we're going we're gonna, to uh, start work on the C Annex. The C Annex uh, is, is one of our what, five annexes that we have. And we're going to, the work that's going to start in January is to put AC and fire suppression uh, and improve the safety of that, uh, of that annex. In order to do that, we're going to have to move all of our students out of there. Um, clearly not an ideal time to be doing that, uh, but we'll be tripling up more rooms. Um, it's a $24 million project that, uh, you know, has been on the books and we've been working uh, and tried to push off for as long as we could, uh, but that's going to start. Uh, one of the things that we're going to ask our cadets to do who are going to be moving is to, uh, to you know, trunk, put their stuff up in the trunk room, uh, you know, over Christmas break. The, uh, the good news is theft is way down. I know as second class cadets, you, you know, as parents, you've heard about the, you know, some petty theft in the barracks. Uh, that is almost non-existent because the cadets are in the rooms a, a large portion of the time. So, <laughs> Um, and we're also installing the uh, camera systems around the barracks and such. So uh, we're hoping that's driving the, the theft down. But we will ask uh, cadets to move out. And then when they come back, there'll be some, uh, some reconfiguration as we get to work on what's really going to be a, I don't think we're even going to see the end of it. Uh, it's going to be a pro project that will probably go into late into 23 uh, to complete that. So it's kind of going to be ops normal for, uh, for a period of time here. Hey, morale. Um, you know, it's, it's Mass Chief uh, Verholz and I walked around the barracks today just to kind of get a sense of where, where the cadets are at, you know, and, and I, think, uh, I think morale is given what time and place it is. You know, it's midterms right now. Those are hard. This is a hard institution to get through. Academically, it's incredibly challenging. Uh, you don't have some of the distractions that we would normally have, uh, you know, with, uh, with fall sports and fall activities. Our son was in the glee club and idlers. That was a big part of his, his time here at the Coast Guard Academy. 
Uh, those things are really not not there as much. But you know, when, when I engage with the cadets, um, and I think I'm you know 33 years into this, a parent of two boys, kind of got a you know pretty good pulse on it. Angie as well. Um, you know, they look tired. They look uh, a little COVID frustrated, like we all are. Um, but they also are incredibly resilient, and they uh, they're looking out for each other. They're taking care of each other, and uh, they do have um, in a lot of the different company areas. They got countdown clocks, you know. So they got. Uh, I saw one today. It was you know 37 days till Thanksgiving, you know 35 days till we go home. So uh, you know they're they're working it. We're going to try to do as much as we can for Halloween to try to put a little boost into the uh, into the morale. We have our own costumes. I can't reveal what they are just yet. <laughs> You'll probably see them on Facebook. Um, but you know, we're, we got, uh, hopefully a soccer game against army this Friday night, which will be, you know, we'll get the band and the cheerleaders involved in that and then volleyball on Saturday. We've got crew on Saturday, pistol on Saturday, uh, sailing on Saturday. So we're keeping our fingers crossed. We're able to do that. You know, sports isn't everything, but it's a good break from the, uh, from the mundane, uh, and you know, midterms is tough, right? So they're getting through midterms. So, you know, I'm not going to sit here and tell you everything's rosy, but, uh, I will say, that we're keeping a close eye on it. Our faculty and staff are, are completely dedicated. Um, they're, they're very attentive to it. And uh, the biggest thing is getting our cadets back into the classroom so that our faculty and staff, our coaches, our crew can put eyes on them, you know, day in and day out. That's, uh, that, that's, that's, that's the biggest check. Um, so, you know, and then, and then, you know, Liberty this weekend was a question in the last group and I'm texting Captain Ray in between, in between this, you know, like I said, the city of New London, the county of New London, uh, the cadets are very sensitive to that, and they're, uh, they're, they're being really attentive. I think they're going to have a big sigh of relief at your Thanksgiving Day uh, <laughs> table. I think they're just going to be happy to be home. They're going to be a big sigh of relief. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, we can all say a prayer for a, for a vaccine uh, there on the, on the 26th or 27th, whatever it is for Thanksgiving Day. So hopefully that helps. Well, Admiral, that leads to the next question about sure. January. Dates. They're asking about January dates and also restrictions on travel during Thanksgiving and Christmas break. Yeah. So uh, the January dates, uh, we're, we're, we're planning right now that first week in January for students to come back. We'll probably stagger it. Uh, Captain Ray and our team here are looking at all the different variables and trying to understand that you have to buy plane tickets and make transportation for your sons and daughters coming back. And I, and I understand that that's a, uh, that's a driving factor for this. We, we also want to make the right decisions at the right time. So we're hoping by the end of next week to have that information out to you uh, and have that completely locked in. Uh, with regards to travel, um, you know, we're going to ask probably like we did for, for folks coming here is, you know, 14 days prior to returning, kind of start to hunker down a little bit and, uh, you know, keep it within your bubble. So if you count 14 days back from, let's say, the 4th or 5th of January, that starts to get right around Christmas Day. Um, you know, obviously travel outside the country is going to be restricted. Um, and I know that creates a, a challenge for our international cadets and, and our cadets who live overseas. So we need to, we need to get them a, a good answer on, on what the plans are there. Um, you know, if, if, uh, like we were talking earlier, you know, family in Northern California, if you're planning on traveling up to, you know, Washington state for, for the holiday, you know, I would just ask, try to try to make those plans maybe early, um, you know, in December. So you can get up and see family and friends uh, and then kind of start to hunker down, you know, 14 days prior to getting back here at the academy. And I think the last one in the chat has to do with well, we're, of the winter sports. In other words, any talk, I'm interpreting this to be any talk in the spring of winter sports playing. Yeah, so I'm on the phone with NUMAC tomorrow with all of our NUMAC presidents. It is a very, uh, our son went to Springfield College for those, uh, uh, student athlete parents that are out there. So our son Tyler played baseball for them and actually played against the Academy for four years. Uh, so we, we understand the, how, how big a part that is of a, of a student's, uh, student's life. Um, we're in an interesting conference where schools like MIT and WPI, um, you know, they do so much research, so much of their focus is on bringing their seniors back, bringing their grad students back, um, and not necessarily bringing their student athletes back. But then we have other schools like Springfield and Wheaton uh, and us who, you know, that student athlete experience makes up a large portion of the, of the, of the, of their student body. 63% of our student body plays an NCAA division three sport. The other 37% play a club sport. Uh, you know, they're all involved in something, which is, which is great. Um, I am going to do everything in my power 
to ensure that our, our student athletes have a safe uh, and effective opportunity to compete in the sports that they love, especially our seniors. We want to try to give them all uh, the last, uh, you know, the last opportunity to walk on the court. And we'd love for you to be there. And if you can't, uh, at least you'll be able to watch it live stream. So I literally 930 tomorrow, Dr. Rose and I are with uh, with the other 10 presidents from the new Mac schools talking about the winter season. Um, my expectation is, you know, not, not getting too far ahead of myself, is that conference play probably will not happen in the in the winter. But uh, each each team will have the opportunity to kind of, you know, set up some uh, set up some conference or set up some opportunities to play within uh, within themselves. Con College is in the same boat as us across the street, and uh, my hope is that we can you know compete against them and some other colleges in the local area. Uh, and then we always obviously have West Point, who's not that far away, who uh, who enjoy uh, competing against us, and we we enjoy competing against them. It gives us an opportunity to get out on the court, and it's a really we had the volleyball team here last weekend and they had a, a neat experience. They all kind of broke into groups after the game by class. All the firsties got together, all the second class got together, the third class, fourth class. It was a neat opportunity. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna do everything in our power. And then let's hope by the time we get to the spring, if your son or daughter is a spring athlete, uh, hopefully they're out there on the uh, athletic fields, on the water, on the, uh, on the track, doing what they love. Thank you. You've got two more in here. One is- okay. um a mold and the other is the shuttle. So let me start with the shuttle. Uh, okay. When the kids return from the winter break, will they be picked up by the shuttle or do they have to arrange their own ride back to the academy? And then just so to at one annex, does that include Chase Hall with mold problems? So let me, uh, I will take the shuttle question and get that to Captain Ray um, and he will make sure that we get that back to, to uh, Kate. They have a great relationship and they're talking back and forth. Um, mold was uh, not nearly as big an issue this, this summer as it has been in the past. Um, we, we live in an area that uh, is incredibly damp and humid, but uh, fortunately not, not as bad this summer. I think it's because we, uh, we had more presence in the barracks, kind of keeping the airflow going and doing the right things. And that's one of the reasons we're doing the Charlie Annex uh, as well, is to get air conditioning in there. It's, it's a bizarre setup. We have AC in one annex, no AC in another, and AC in another annex. So you have two AC boundaries, you know, combining, uh, laying up against one that doesn't. Uh, so that, you know, it's a perfect environment for mold, but not nearly where, as bad as we had last year. I'm sorry, is that where the racetrack is? The portion that is gonna be under construction? The racetrack. I, that's all I've no, ever Kate, heard I the think, cadets call it. <laughs> I think, Kate, that, that, that's already been under, that's already uh, been refurbished that, uh, Let's okay. See, the out, outboard annex there. So that was the biggest issue over the last couple of years with yeah, mold. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's already been remediated. Uh, that yeah, the, the mold yeah mold was remediated, and this this summer um, they got a pretty uh, pretty clear guidance from the uh, superintendent that uh, I don't want to see any mold. Um, <laughs> we saw some, but but not nearly as bad. Uh, nothing like we had to bring in out external folks to clean it or anything like that. All right, folks, was there any more? No, not in the chat. Anybody else? Okay. <laughs> Can All I just right, add well, a, a shout out to you when you talked about morale? I think your intercompany sports competition was so brilliant. Our son loved it. I think it was just light and fun, something fun to look forward to. So thank you for doing that. I mean, I no, think it was our, it was our pleasure. It was, uh, it was fun. I got drafted to play a little cornhole there a couple times. Um, <laughs> And uh, I helped golf company out on the football field uh, once. Uh, didn't, t didn't tear a hamstring or anything like that. But yeah, they had a blast. They really we did. We really enjoyed, uh, mm -hmm. you know, kind of. They got really competitive. I mean, oh, all they the got really were talking the night before. <laughs> Who is going to win? And I thought, wow, okay. Yeah. Was fun. This, was, this was typical 18 to 23 year olds, right? The first time you get, they tell them you yes. got to do it. They're like, yeah, okay, we got to do this. By day three, they had their own T-shirts. You know, they're practicing. <laughs> they were, so they, were cool. they were incredibly competitive, but but the, they, they were great. They 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 embraced it. They owned it. And now, like I said, we got to do a better job of uh, of uh, recreating it in the future, which will be which will be challenging. But those are good challenges to have, and things that we're learning from COVID. Uh, and we will be better on the other end of this uh, when we come out of it. So again, thank you for all of your support. Thank you for all of your engagement. Uh, keep uh, keep supporting your loved ones. Uh, tell them they're doing a good job because they are, uh, and, they are. and uh, we're, we're very proud of them, and I know you are as well, and I look forward to the day when we, uh, we can all be together 
And uh, let's already start planning for uh, May 18th, 2022, Cadet yes. Memorial Field. We'll see you there. <laughs> yes. Happy holidays. I was saying to you guys, thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank okay, you. Take bye care. Bye. And I, I uh, see there was one last question on grading, and I, I haven't heard any changes on the grading. If anybody wants to jump in, Kate. So, so they're looking at it now, and it's going to depend kind of like they did in the spring where they, you know, midstream changed everything. They're trying to see how much is going to be virtual um, because they're, they're having a little bit more virtual now. Like the next three days are virtual. They've got the box launches, which all the kids complained about. At least I heard about it in my house. Um, but that's to, to draw a, a solid line in those that may be infected with COVID to try and stall it, which is the right thing to do, actually. Um, so they are aware of it and they're looking at it and they will be fair about it, however that works out. But we won't hear more until probably, uh, so they're coming out with this, this, the policy, I think November 1st or around there about the travel and a lot of other things. And that seems to be a date that a bunch of different groups are working towards, they're having a lot of meetings and they're working towards getting uh, information to the cadets primarily. And then, you know, by default we get it. Um, so no great answers, but I do know that they're aware of it and they're, they are evaluating it. So, uh, so I'll shift us back a little bit for some fun <laughs> and to get to know each other if we can. So I did put in the chat, you know, if you came in a little bit late, please welcome the virtual class of 2022. Um, and thank you, Kate, that was a, a good segue. I also put the link in there for all the activities that are going on that are Zoom and it's a fabulous uh, agenda of items. Um, I wanna finish uh, introducing, cause I don't know if you know Tom Barry, uh, if you want to just jump in, Tom, and then Christine, and then I have an announcement, and we'll turn it back to you, Tom. Sure. Uh, good evening. Thank you for participating. I am Tom Barry, the parent of Ryan Barry, class of 2022. Uh, he's in Foxtrot Company. My wife and I, we live in Broomfield, Colorado. Our daughter has unexpectedly joined us her freshman year at Northwestern as a virtual student. So we've also experienced some of the COVID ramifications. I was a Parents Association Class of 2022 representative in 2018-2019. I'm currently the Vice President for Governance in 2020, and I'm proud to represent you on the Parents Association Executive Council and encourage you to reach out to me anytime. So I guess first I would like to say congratulations. You have survived this process, and more importantly, your cadet is now a junior at one of the most prestigious and most physically mentally, academically difficult schools in the nation. I am told that over the next year, we have a few additional items to look forward to. So as the Admiral mentioned, uh, we have a $40,000 loan for our cadets. They get to use that however they wanna use that. Uh, there's ring selection, which is going on right now. That's a big deal. Uh, ring dance, which is in the spring. And then also the white uniforms that cadets will get in the spring. And just so you know, that's gonna be an additional thousand dollars out of somebody's pocket. So when, when we first researched the Coast Guard Academy, the websites all said that it is the school where you go to make friends for life. And I want to especially thank the many parents that have contributed to my son's friendships by tolerating him at your homes from Boston to Philly to Tampa and many other places I am really proud to be an extended part of this Coast Guard family. So for, the, for my cocktail this evening, uh, I do have uh, an Irish red ale. Uh, this is my Irish red homebrew. As my wife told me, I needed, needed a COVID hobby. So this is my COVID hobby. So with that said, we're gonna go around to uh, anyone that would like to introduce themselves uh, during our cocktail hour. Please give your name, your cadet, your company, your location, uh, any comments you have with regard to looking forward to. If you want to introduce your cocktail, please do, please do that. But before I go to, to parents, I guess I'll start uh, with Christine, who's your other class representative. Tom, give me just one second, though, just to make sure, sure. that Christine Hunahan has a minute to introduce herself as the class parent. And I just need to make one announcement, and then it's all yours, because he's got a great sort of way for us to, to get to know each other. So, Christine. 
Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Christine Hunahan, if I haven't met you. Um, my son is Kyle, who is on um, an Echo company. And we live in Southbury, Connecticut. So I have had a bunch of uh, only boys at my home. Um, we spent a number of weekends uh, with God. I think our top number was maybe eight boys. Very interesting. So much fun to feed. Whenever everyone would go home, all of our friends would be like, okay, how many eggs did they eat? We'd be like, oh, only, you know, 43 eggs this morning, like insane. So much fun and good stuff, you know, two pounds of bacon, you know, four boxes of donut. And that was just breakfast. And then we kept going. So lots of fun. Um, I think Tom went through, probably I learned a couple of things and what he had said. Um, it's been such a strange year and I'm sorry that everybody didn't get together, you know, more often. And I'm so sorry that it wasn't in person this year because last year we met a bunch of people like next year, we all have to stay at the, stay at the same hotel and um, hopefully next year we'll be able to do it. And I think one of the questions that we had chatted about when people introduce themselves is what do you look forward to for your cadet? Um, and I think like just I look forward to, I think what he looks forward to is a little more normalcy. Um, he's a rugby player, so I didn't get much of a season this year. So I look forward to a full season next year. And certainly in-person classes, I think uh, just, you know, just general, like looking forward to and hoping the assignment for the summer is, you know, a normal one or something with a little more normalcy. But, you know, we'll have to wait and see and, you know, take it day by day. Thank you. So, Anybody, again, sorry, anybody feel free to reach out like Tom had said as well. Um, and thank I'm, you. Yeah, thank you, Christine. I'm typing in the chat um, what Tom's going to host for each one of us to say. And just before my announcement, I probably never really did introduce myself. I am Margo Palermo. I'm the treasurer of the Parents Association working with all these wonderful people. I want to give a shout out to the Hargrove family because I think you really rocked it on Facebook with your um, gear. So I just saw your name and said, you, you go, girl. That was great. Um, I also want to give an announcement. And again, I'm not always the best at um, fundraising, although I was a broker for many years and know how to ask for the order, but I will tell you we're in a competition. This is a competition and we're competitive. Our kids are competitive. So as the class of 2022, we are being asked to join in what's titled the, and let me do it correctly, the FE 300. Why is it called the FE 300? Because we know how hard our cadets work, right? To achieve their perfect 300 score on their physical fitness exam, right? So in honor of that, we've got a campaign to finish the Emlyn Tunnel Cadet Strength and Conditioning Center. So the goal is for each family to give $300 per cadet family by the close by December of 2020. So what that is, is a class goal of $62,500 for a total among all the classes of twenty of $250,000. So I will put it in the chat. There's different levels if you give, but I just wanted to put it out there. You're gonna hear about it, but it's a competition because if our class wins, then all our cadets get the coffee and there's a lot of other fun things that come with it. So I'll put that all in the chat. I'll let Tom take over. Oh, and I think I owe you my answers, right? So my son is Michael Palermo. He's golf company. He's one of the football players that just got swabbed um, because they're hoping they'll get a game in uh, this season. We're from Long Island. And what do I look forward to is him playing on the field again. So that's me and Tom back to you. Well, real quick, I just want to jump in. I'm Kate Farrington, my daughter's 2021. We won last year, 2021 did. So I challenge you to beat <laughs> us this year. That's it. Okay, well, we got to spread the word for 2022. And Tom, you can start the rotation. Oh, well, that's fine. We'll go to Kate just because she's 2022, unlike our president. Or I mean, Chris, we'll go to Chris. So Chris, if you want to start. Oh, gosh. Okay. Yep. I'm Chris Barnett. My uh, daughter, Kate, is uh, on this women's soccer team, although she's going to sit out for the one game this year due to an injury. I am drinking a uh, in my anchor glass here, my my Coast Guard swag, and um, I'm coming to you from West Hartford, not too far from the academy. And just quick fun fact, Christine, eight female cadets will also eat at least a minimum of 43 eggs in a day. Uh, so <laughs> you've got nothing on, on having them here locally. Um, who did we miss? Where do we want to go next? Uh, we can go to uh, Sharon from California if you'd like to extrapolate 
since you've previously talked as well. Sure, absolutely. Hi, everyone. Sharon and Steve Kilty from Hi. Southern California. Our cadet is Cameron Kilty, hotel company. He's a NAVARC major. He's on the crew team. He really enjoyed inner tube water polo for the intercompany sports. That was fun. Um, what else? Did I miss something? Um, He's made a lot of great friends and so many of your family names we recognize and you know, we truly appreciate the friendships that he's made with your sons and daughters. And then Margo, I have to shout out, our son did AIM his junior summer and your son was in his group and he had hilarious stories um, about that experience. They had a really good group. <laughs> oh, and we are drinking, oh, yes. we're drinking Chardonnay, Chardonnay. from Costco. <laughs> Great, so I'm just going across the top and I'll pick names. You're welcome to pass if you'd like, but that allows the introverts to participate as well as the extroverts. So the, the Carolines is who's next on, on my screen. You're muted. Don't worry, it's the little button at the bottom and it looks like a microphone. Let them look for it, Tom, while you maybe do somebody else so they don't feel- the So we'll go to Melissa. Uh, next, if you don't mind uh, sharing. I bet I'll look at Karen. Oh, hi, I'm Melissa Miagani, and I just got a text zing up from my son, which my, my son tells me nothing, so I know nothing that goes on. He doesn't, he take, has about a two-day turnaround on text, but um, his name is Zane Miagani, and he, I think he's in a health company. Um, He's not, we live in Hawaii, so I'm not drinking anything because it's only 3.22 in the afternoon, so water. Um, so he's not really, but he's not from here. He's a, his dad's a Marine active duty, so he's kind of from everywhere. Um, yeah, so, I mean, I, I'd love to, I don't know a lot of the names because like I said, he doesn't tell me a whole lot, but, <laughs> but it's nice to meet everybody. Thank you, and then we'll go to the Carolines. Yes, hey, uh, this is Caroline and Walter Richters. Our daughter is Kelly Richters. Uh, she's in the Alpha Company um, and, and the government major. We're from Chesterfield, Virginia. What we look forward to is her graduation. So what are we drinking? We're drinking purified water. Water, H-U-O. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, and we'll go to Karen, who is also part of the Parents Association. There, hello. Um, I'm the secretary of the Parents Association uh, located in sunny Southern California, San Diego. Uh, my daughter is class of 2023, Jillian. She plays um, water polo and rugby. And um, uh, I hope you're enjoying Virtual Parents Weekend. And thank you to Karen for all the Zooming that she set up for us. I didn't realize you were still in our, she's been on it all day and just thank you. Her hard work really is, is why we're here. You're welcome. Sparkling water. <laughs> Thanks, Karen. The next person I have is Emily Jackson. Hi, uh, my husband, Sam and I, we're from Richardson, Texas, just outside of Dallas. Uh, our son, Nathan Jackson, is part of Bravo Company, and uh, Sam made us some margaritas tonight. It's only about 7, almost 7.30 here, so. 8.30. Oh, 8.30. Uh, so, uh, I think your mute went on, Emily. Like, so you might have just by accident. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Uh, I'm looking forward to traveling again, especially back to Connecticut since it's uh, going to be in the 90s tomorrow again. Uh, we don't get much fall here, so it's nice to get fall in Connecticut. Thank you. Now I see Chris and Myla. Chris and Milo Rogers from Delran, New Jersey. Our son, Phil, is in a hotel company. He's a wrestler as well. 
um, double E major. We're looking forward to getting back to the normal life uh, up at the academy, being able to go up and visit and stuff, which we can't do right now, you know, because we're close enough to drive. And uh, my beverage is actually a Coast Guard kind of thing. It's a from Six Bears and a Goat, which is own a brewery down in Virginia owned by six Coast Guard grads who I was lucky to meet one of the owners and a Navy grad. Uh, and they're voted one of the best in the area down, I think in uh, Petersburg, Virginia. So if you're ever down that way, great place to visit. Thank you. I have Chris Anthony. Hello, can you hear us? Yes, I'm Maria Anthony and this is my husband, Chris. Our cadet is Olivia in class of 2022. Um, we also have a son, David, in 2024. Um, Olivia's in golf company. We're from Alexandria, Virginia and are just looking forward to being able to travel more and just get out more. And we, we hope that we're looking forward to that for our children as well. And we're just drinking fizzy waters tonight. <laughs> Thank you. Tara Hargrove, you, you're already famous. So thank you for your participation. Thank you. And it, it's Tyra. It looks like Tara, but it's like the model's name, Tyra. Um, yeah, I, I was so excited to see that competition. I sent a message to my son just to give him a heads up. Your family is going to represent um, my son is Calfani. Uh, he is in golf. Um, we're from Murfreesboro, which is about 30 minutes outside of Nashville. Um, his sports are um, body lifting. Is that what it is? Yeah, body, no, power lifting or something like that. And jujitsu. I just know it has something to do with weights. He lifts a lot of weight. Um, I'm just drinking water. My husband's name is Craig. Uh, he's busy right now. Um, and what do I look forward to? I'm not going to lie. I look forward to him coming home in 37 days, whatever that is. But um, he is an electrical engineering student. And I just look forward to, you know, him having a positive experience growing up, becoming, you know, just whoever he came here onto this earth to be. That's all I want for my son. So nice to see everybody. <laughs> Rachel Schroeder. Oh, can I just jump in for a second? Yeah. Tyra, uh, so did you see Kalfani's video for Parents Weekend? I have not seen it yet. Where is it? It's, so it's going to be posted and it's the summer experience and Kalfani represented your class talking about his summer experience and he was so positive and so oh, excited. Oh. And even he's like, I didn't think I'd like going on the, the 44s, but it was wonderful and you're really going <laughs> to like it. So I'm, I'm represented you guys well. Thank you, Kate. I appreciate you. Hello, I'm Rachel Schroeder. My husband, Scott, is off camera and we are from Dayton, Wyoming. And I'm, Tyra, I'm impressed that you're wearing a tank top because we got eight inches of snow over the weekend. We are definitely below zero are not below zero, but definitely in the freezing. So it's very, very cold here already. Rachel, you don't um, even see, I'm sitting here like, oh, I'm so Oh hot. my gosh, that, <laughs> we don't even have air conditioning in our house. So come to Wyoming, you don't need air conditioning here. So um, my son, our son, Mason Schroeder, he, um, I'm glad that there's another parent who doesn't know what company he's in because <laughs> we're texting him and I'm like, I don't know. I think he's an echo. I don't know. He is on the football team and I'm most looking forward to his football game. The one and only football game. I'm hoping that it does not get canceled. I'm, I'm a little bit worried to hear all of these um, COVID positive cases happening on the football team. So that makes me nervous. So I'm drinking Chardonnay. It is not from Costco. I believe it's from our local grocery store. So, which in a town of 200 is like pretty amazing that we have wine in our local grocery store. So, um, let's see, did I miss anything? I think that's it. So well, they tested all the football players today. They did? They all okay. got they'll know on Wednesday. Okay, very good. So fingers crossed. Okay. Yes, yes, thank you. 
Thank you. And I have Bill Aitken. Good evening, all. Uh, my name is William Aiken. Uh, my cadet is Austin Aiken. He is in Alpha Company. Uh, he plays on the combat arms team, although they're down this year because the gun range at the academy is contaminated. So that's closed down for the next year or so. So right now he's doing weightlifting. Um, and he's also playing golf. Um, the cocktail that I have today, I just um, drinking coffee. And what I'm looking forward to is I'm hoping that the cadets can, you know, get some back to some form of normalcy so they could all uh, so that they can enjoy all of the, um, the, the ceremonial events that happen at the academy, especially since they're approaching the, the end of their junior and into their uh, one C year. Thank you. Uh, Taranj, is that correct? We got to help you with the mute. Oh, you got it. Okay, got it. Taryn Johnson. Hello. Ah, everyone. That's... Um, hello. Hello, Erica and Taryn Johnson. Um, our son is Taryn Johnson, or referred to as TJ. He is in Charlie Company, um, mechanical engineer. Um, he's, um, I know he's, I know he's weightlifting and he's um, playing golf and, and he, he did, he did um, Frisbee this year. Um, I thought one of the, inter, he, he enjoyed that. Um, I think for us, what are, you, what are we looking forward to with him? Want him to grow up to be a good man, a good honorable man. That's all I want. I want him to get through this year. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking a semester, semester at a time. Let's get through it each year. <laughs> but thank you again, everyone. Thank you. And I have David Graham. Hey, Taryn. Hey, it's good to see you, Taryn. I saw you on the, the first year when we were uh, together, so it's good to see you again. Yeah, good seeing you, too. Yeah, I'm David Graham. My son is Foster Graham. He's in uh, and and um, we're from Boston, although I'm currently in New York um, on work. My wife's in, she's in Boston. Uh, he does rugby, and uh, though I like bowling, he was able to be on the bowling team, so that was really good. Uh, he was excited about that, and they did really well. Um, I guess what I'm looking forward to, I think the tricky part is I'm looking forward to him coming home because we were in the empty nest stage. But my wife is having a hard time with the kids being out of the house. <laughs> so it helps her and it helps me if her kids are around, even though it doesn't help me, <laughs> but that's how it is. You know, it is being a mom. Uh, they love their children. And so I love my wife. So I want them to be back. Um, so I'll probably, but like kind of what Terrence said, I'm looking forward to him just doing well this year. Like he's branched out uh, and he's uh, enjoying his time there. So, uh, and I'm not drinking anything at the time. I'm here on work, so I have to keep uh, keep myself straight. So, but thank you. Thank you. I just say, can I say something quick? Um, I'm sorry, I've got to say, we're from Atlanta, Georgia. Oh, yeah. Um, and um, we're drinking tea. Tea's drinking tea. <laughs> it's too close to bedtime for me. <laughs> so, I, I just wanted to jump in. I actually finished my glass of wine with the class of 2024, and I'm not having another one. But there's a huge difference between uh, third class and second class. And you guys haven't really seen it yet, but you will when they come home because they have now graduated into leaders with a lot more responsibility, being cadre and all of those things. Uh, so much of the confidence that was kind of taken away, swab summer and then built back up, you'll see a marked difference this year. So that's something to look forward to. All right, thank you. And I have Carrie and Chris. Well, hello everyone. Um, I'm Chris Johnson here with my wife, Carrie, and we're from Moscow, Idaho. And our son is Daniel Johnson. Uh, Danny is um, in Charlie Company. He's also uh, studying civil engineering and he's a rugby player as well. Man, we look forward, we've enjoyed our time in New London when we have been back there and, and hope we get through this COVID mess. Um, we're excited about his graduation. We're excited about him coming home. Um, man, we haven't really talked to him. Our kid doesn't really tell us much, so we might need all <laughs> you parents to uh, kind of clue us in on a few <laughs> things now and then. But um, anyway, uh, he's had a good experience there. We're really uh, happy how it's, how it's gone. and. And if he's been friends with any of your kids, uh, all the merrier. So 
Uh, I have a rum and coke, and I think Carrie's got a red wine, also mm -hmm. from Costco. <laughs> so do like so cheers to the class of 2022. Get them going. Yes, Danny is a, a friend of Ryan's. So if you need any insight of Danny, I can route it through Ryan. Let me know. So you guys in May, you're going to start looking to secure houses for graduation. And I mean, I did it. I put down the deposit and they uh, they go up. You fill out um, a lease. I will send it to Margo or Chris or something, the, the website. And it has a bunch of different homes. And the requirement, I guess, for me was, Mom, you know, I want to have a lot of my friends over, so make sure it's big enough. I'm like, oh, all right. You know, money's not an option. You're paying it with it with your $40,000 loan. I'm just checking. So, um, but that's something that you want to look into. And if your your kid is really social. And so we got a house actually on the beach that, uh, I mean, it's in May. I'm, I'm sure that they'll go swimming anyway. Um, but that's something that you're going to start looking at. It, it seems like it's ridiculously early, but it's it's not. So like April, May, start looking. So can I butt in just a quick second? So is it, a, is it basically a week long kind yes. of festivities going on? Okay, so graduation would be like on a Wednesday. It's on so a Wednesday. And so I think the events start now, okay. 2021 is still up in the air and I, ha I, still, I, I still have the house cause I am hopeful. Um, but it is, there is like a ball that they, I think usually have at Foxwoods. They have all of these different events and um, I think they primarily start on uh, Sunday, but so I got the house, I think from Saturday through the following Saturday, because after they graduate, they have to get all their crap out of Chase, like fast. Oh, mm -hmm. And having her fill her car up and bring it to the rental house so that we can throw most of it out, I'm sure. Um, it seemed like that that was the thing to do. And, and you know, they still want to see their friends because these are people that if they're not stationed together, right, they might not see each other for a while and they've lived together for four years. So, uh, so it really is like a, a week long thing. I tell you more, except we have our meeting on s Friday or Saturday with Admiral Kelly and Christy Rose to tell us what graduation is about, like what it's supposed to be. Okay, thank you. And the next that I see is the last video person, which is Galaxy S9. So. Oh, there she I think that's me. Is that me? Yes. Yes, it is. Oh, hi, Tom. Hi. It's, it's Barb Hartman. Hi. I'm from Thornton, Colorado. My daughter is Bethany Hartman. She's in Delta, I believe. And um, I was shocked when the Admiral said that we're at 32 day or 35 day count because my other daughter is in 2021 and I've been hearing that count this whole time because she's counting down to graduation. So I was kind of like, oh, wow, we've got that many days till Thanksgiving and we get to see them. I'm so excited. So that was exciting. Um, what else? I'm drinking water and I'm happy to see you all tonight. <laughs> Hi. Great to see you. I have Hi, uh, Diana Hill. Good evening, um, Diana Hill, um, my um, husband, Don Hill, he's in South Lake, Texas. I'm actually in Houston right now, but we live in South Lake, Texas. Our son is Greg Hill and he's an echo company. He's a civil engineering major. And I'm looking forward to optimistically traveling to New London in the spring to see lacrosse games. He is goalie for the lacrosse team. So that's the thing I'm looking forward to. Um, in the short term, of course, also looking forward to and coming home for Thanksgiving and spending a few days. Great, thank you. So those are everybody that's on webcam. Uh, I'll let anybody else who wants to volunteer from the remaining list uh, volunteer if you'd like to share uh, any information or have any questions, uh, please just uh, speak out. 
Well, I see a gentleman in a blue shirt, so I'm calling on you. <laughs> okay, I'm Don Hill on the other half of the equation. <laughs> Just uh, listening in here in uh, South Lake, which is a sub, uh, suburb between Dallas and Fort Worth. And um, I agree with everything Diana said. We're just looking forward to getting back because we've also gotten close with some of Greg's friends from the lacrosse team. And we've had that, as other people have mentioned, we've had people stay with us also. So it's it'll be good to be able to go back up to New London. Yeah, we actually have a good COVID story. Um, Greg had invited several boys um, from the class of 2022 to Texas to experience Texas and Houston rodeo in March in their here on spring break when COVID breaks out. Oh. So they didn't get to go to the rodeo, but they still experienced Texas and had an amazing time. And uh, from that experience, I can also attest to how much food that the boys can eat. And at <laughs> one point we thought that um, airline travel maybe was suspended and we thought we might have them for a really long time. And I love all the boys, but I'm not sure how I would have ever fed them for a long a lot period of, of time. It was, yeah, but it cooking. was fun. It was great. And all of the kids are just so amazing. And we do miss visiting. And so just echoing again, we so look forward to being able to go back to the Academy to see you guys, to see the friends, as Don said, and uh, hopefully to see lacrosse games in the spring. And Parents Weekend next year. Yes. Absolutely. And somebody has a wonderful, is it a dog that's sitting yeah. with you? Val James, is that correct? That's me. Um, I'm Valerie James. This is one of my cute puppies. Um, we started collecting puppies after our kids went off to college. So each kid that's gone off to college, we've gotten a puppy. Here's the other one. He's pretty cute too. They're adorable. Um, my daughter's name is Madison James. She's um, on the volleyball team and a marketing major in Foxtrot Company. And we are from Rockwall, Texas. So we hang out down here with the Hills and the, and the Jacksons. And I'm not drinking anything at this point. Probably should. Great, and I think, uh, is it Maranji? That just popped on your video? Orange iPad. Orange iPad. With the white wall behind you. Sometimes you can't figure out the mute though. If you're, you know, this is a new skill. Oh, there it is. You, that was the right way. <laughs> there awesome. it is. Yeah, you're off mute. My son is on Juanos. Manos. He's uh, he plays rugby, and we from uh, Southern California, Paris, uh, California. Can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and that's it. Thank you, thank you guys for what you're doing. Thank you very much. We can't see you either. Bring the camera down a little more. <laughs> I was gonna say that. <laughs> there you, you go. Me? Stop right there. Yeah. All right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> thank you guys. Thank you very much for all you do. Uh, are you safe out there in California with the fires? Yeah, we're pretty much safe. Uh, the fire is uh, mostly in the, in the, in the north, uh, north, northern California. We are living in southern California. Okay, good. So, and yeah. California is a green state, by the way, in on the Connecticut website right now. Oh, yeah. good. Thank you. Oh, great. I'm who, looking who, at who, it. Who's this cadet? Antoine is Manos. Antoine? Yeah, Antoine nice. And he oh. plays rugby. <laughs> and he plays rugby. Okay. He's been at my house a few times. So much fun. We love Antoine. <laughs> oh, thank <Aww>. you. <laughs> yeah, he's a great friend to my son, Kyle. Oh, okay. Thank you. I, I was up there for the IC Sports. I was up there for Parents Weekend stuff, but I happened to be there during the awards ceremony and the finals for all the IC sports. And I, in the, you know, three plus years that I've been going there, I've never seen that many cadets uh, that happy, excited, like involved. Um, 
I, the golf company kids did that huddle thing where they, you know, like you bend down and you make weird noises. I, it was really funny to watch and they just had a blast. Um, so, I mean, I hope that brings you a little bit of comfort. It was, I, cause I looked for it specifically. I wanted to see what the mood was like. And, um, and I have to say that it was, it was really nice. And Admiral Kelly, apparently they did IC sports when he was there. And then it kind of went away with all of the varsity sports that came up and then all of the club sports that came up. So it was his idea to like reinstate it. And it's the first time where an entire company, uh, regardless of class, could sure. hang out, work together. I mean, Brennan apparently won badminton. I didn't even know that there were rules. So um, then that's my daughter and her second, her partner was a second class. And that's normally not things you would have seen. Mm -hmm. So they had the opportunity to have these, you know, form these relationships with other classmates in, in different classes, which is awesome because I have to tell you, their 1C summer, you have so much to look forward to. Brenna was on the Richard Snyder the entire summer and she had a horrible swab summer. Didn't want to stay, it was awful. Her second phase cadre, a girl named Stephanie with a very long Greek last name that I can never pronounce, um, was kind of like, saw something in her. And, and so they kind of bonded a little bit and she put her uh, the shoulder boards on. And then when Stephanie graduated, she asked Brennan to be her first salute, which I thought was really cool. Mm -hmm. And Stephanie was an officer on the Richard Snyder. And, uh, and she knew Brenna wanted to go to that size boat and said, hey, I've got a spot for a girl and a guy. You know, uh, these are the guys that I'm looking at. It's, what do you think? And then do you want it? And she went down and she had an amazing summer. And it, part of it's because of COVID. So she got certified or, or whatever, qualified to do all of these things. So she actually acted as an officer this summer, not as a training person. She was on the quarter deck watch I don't know I should really listen more carefully I don't and so um of course she said you know mom like they needed me to pass this so we could go out to sea and I was like okay but do you know what you're doing because now you're in a position to really make a bad mistake if you don't know what you're doing she's like that's not helpful and I said all right so she was going after the hurricane and she said what what advice do you have and I said hold on tight and wear a life jacket I mean like what are you what are you going to say? So they have all of these opportunities. Um, uh, the first class summer, something like, and, and it will, um, I really think it'll be back to normal ish then. Uh, so you have a lot to look forward to hearing their stories because they're, they're grownups at that point. I mean, she was 21. So things to look forward to. Yeah, thank you, Kate. And I think I did miss Juan Carmelita. You need to unmute. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, hi, Thanks for doing um, what you guys are doing. Um, I'm Carmelita, and my husband's name is uh, Dennis. Uh, he's not currently right. Uh, here with me, and our son is um, is in uh, Alpha Company. Uh, his name is Kenji, and he he's in a wrestling team with um, Chris and Milo's uh, son Paul and Paul that Wilder and the other other teammates. So, but um, we're we live here in um, San Diego, California, and what I love uh, look. To look forward to for uh, for my son coming home and giving him a big hug and I miss him a lot. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, Tara and J uh, Chris and everyone. And I tried to get everybody who was on video. I will if there's anybody who has an alibi that would like to say anything, or if there's <laughs> any questions for the parents association, please ask us. Uh, we have the president, the vice president, on the call. So, you know, they'd welcome questions either now or at any point in the future. Well, we are four minutes over. So if nobody has anything, I, I know some of you have, need sleep or <laughs> have other things, but how are we? Are we good? 
No more questions or? All right, well, we know we're great. Together so is this something that, that you guys would like to do like quarterly? Yeah, I think it's great. It's nice. Okay, yeah, I, I mean, just it's a chance to connect because you, I don't know. In today's world, everybody's doing Zoom anyway. So um, so we'll look at doing maybe class things quarterly. And since, you know, I'm the outgoing president, I'm gonna, it's Chris, it's all you, but we'll set up quarterly Zooms. Probably we'll do another one um, at the beginning of the new year. We have to uh, encourage more than 26 people to attend. That's up to you. Is not a good representation. Agreed. Well, we'll see what 2021 does. I mean, 2024, of course, would be the most. They didn't get a real swearing in day. They didn't get to tour anything. They didn't get to, you know, some of them never got the chance to visit the academy because they were going to come in the spring and that was that. Um, and they're not getting a, the, the parents weekend typical experience, but there's a video that they've created about Chase Hall that will show you parts of Chase Hall that you never would have seen if you were there physically. So, so there's, there's stuff for those of us that have been around the block to watch too. Um, the Academy went out of its way to work with us uh, and the cadets did most of the filming and, um, and participation. So that kept them kind of busy too. All right, well, next time we have a Zoom, everyone will have to bring another 2022 friend and that way we'll at least double this team. Great yeah. idea. Great idea. Hey, can, can I can I ask a question, Kate? Yeah. Did you guys did you have a pretty good turnout for the twenty twenty four parents? Yeah, I, we were up to eighty five. About eighty five. So, nice. which wasn't bad. And then there were some on the uh, way west coast because it was an hour earlier. They're just at work, and so they'll okay. watch it. We'll watch how many watch the the YouTube posting to see. Okay. Did everybody here watch the well the kickoff yesterday? Because there's a video on the YouTube channel. Um, we have a new vice president of uh, communications, Molly. She's actually a 2024 parent, but this is what she does for a living. So, you know, more power to her. She set up a wonderful YouTube channel, and we're putting all the videos. Everything that we're doing will be available to go look at later. So if you haven't seen the welcome, you'll get to meet the project people. It, uh, Chris does a great job, uh, Chris Barnett does a great job walking through where all the different things for Parents Weekend are. So you're okay. not gonna miss anything. So I would okay. recommend that you do that. And I put the link actually, everyone, if you wanted right here, I don't know if you could see it, but it's the schedule of events. Let me just see if I can even copy that again. But if you double click on that and save it right now, um, to your desktop, it'll just, um, to Kate's point, you know, bring you right to what's going on tomorrow. Did it go? Um, but it's in there. I just wanted to point out and see if that worked. No, that's the other thing. Sorry, it's at the top. If you scroll up, you'll see it. All right. Well, have a wonderful evening, everyone. And really thank you for, for celebrating with us and, and have fun at Parents Weekend this week weekend. Thank you guys. This was great. Right. We really appreciate Thank it. Bye guys. Great. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Go Bears. <laughs>